Hello and welcome to the session in which we are working in chapter 10, making investment, making capital investment decisions. So in this session specifically, we're going to look at something that we already learned, which is operating cash flow, how to calculate operating cash flow. But we're going to look at a different variation of the operating cash flow. So we're going to take look at the formula, then use the formula in different variation. Okay. So what we're going to see in this chapter is we're going to see different approaches we will see different approaches to operating cash flow that will that exist that gives us the same measure now remember different approaches but the answer will be the same if they are used correctly they all produce the same answer and one is not necessarily any better or useful than the other all what it is it depends how the information given to us so as long as we understand how to calculate operating cash flow you're going to be able to make various decisions okay so What's going to happen, we're going to be able to examine several of these variation next to see how they are related. So basically, they are all related, but we'll be able to look at the information from a different perspective because the information might be given to us in a different perspective. So basically, we're going to start with a simple example. Then we will illustrate, we will illustrate the, the various method. So let's start with this data. Okay, so here's what we have, what we have. So let's assume we have a particular project under consideration. Okay, and we're going to have sales, cost, depreciation, and we're going to have also taxes. So those are the four items that we're going to be working with. So it's a different definition of operating cash flow simply amount to different ways of manipulating basic information about sales, cost, depreciation, and taxes. So how does it work? If you really think about it, we'll take sales minus cost minus depreciation, and that's going to give me, hopefully we know this is going to give us earning before interest and taxes. Now we're going to assume we're not dealing with interest. Then we subtract taxes. Then we get to net income so this is accrual so let's take a look at this example we have sales of 1500 just all what i'm doing is taking the information that's given to us sales of 1500 cost of 700 depreciation of 600 and these are all minuses so that's going to give us an earning before interest and taxes of 200 now we're going to assume that the taxes are 34 percent so basically there's more than one way to look at this if your taxes are 34 percent so if you're going to have to pay taxes if you have 200 million or 200 dollars in income and you have to pay taxes of 34 percent it means you have to pay 68 dollars another way to look at this if you have 200 in earnings before taxes and you're going to have to pay 34 percent it means you are keeping 66 this is how much you are keeping because you have to pay the government 34 it's going to give you uh what's 200 times 66 uh i should know this but uh 200 times 0. 0.66 that's 132. so basically you're going to have to pay taxes again taxes is 68 and as a result you have net income of 52 but remember if you know your earnings before interest and taxes is 200, your taxes are 34, you could just take 200 times 0 0.66 and it will give you 132. So basically, if you really look, make sure you understand how the income statement worked, then what did we learn? To calculate operating cash flow, remember, we'll take EBIT. EBIT for us is $200 plus depreciation minus taxes and that's going to give us 732 dollars and this is what we learned up to this point so up to this point we learned this formula operating cash flow equal to ebit plus depreciation minus taxes now we're going to calculate operating cash flow from a different perspective basically manipulating knowing information about the formula we're going to be able to manipulate the numbers to come up with the same answer don't get me wrong we're going to come up with 732 dollars so we're going to start with the first approach which is called the bottom up approach let's look at the bottom up approach and how does it work okay so again basically using the same information okay 
So, because we are ignoring financing expenses, so we don't have interest in this example, we can write the projected net income as follow. So, projected net income equal to EBIT minus taxes. Of course, remember when I get to EBIT, I said if I multiply EBIT by 0.66, it's going to give me my net income. Okay, so, or I take my EBIT minus my taxes, which ta taxes happens to be 68, which will give me 132. And if I took EBIT, which is 200 times 0 0.66, will give me 132. So 132 is easy. This is the projected net income. So this is net income. If we simply add depreciation to both sides, we arrive slightly to a very common expression for operating cash flow. So if we take, so basically simply put, another way to calculate operating cash flow is to take your net income, assuming you have no interest. Now, bear in mind, there's an assumption here that you have no interest expense here. So you'll take net income plus depreciation. So basically... Net income is 132, depreciation 600, back to where we started. Remember, I told you we're going to come back to this number. This is called the bottom-up approach, and hopefully you know you know why, because we started with net income. This is the bottom. This is why it's called the bottom-up approach. We started with net income, and we work backward, and we add back non-cash deductions such as depreciation. Again, it's crucial to remember that this definition is correct only if there is no interest expense subtracted in calculating net income. If there's any interest expense, assume it's cash, it's going to have to be deducted, obviously, because it's a cash payment. Now, let's look at the top-down approach. Top-down approach, and hopefully now you're saying, well, the top-down approach is starting on the top, which is starting with sales, okay? So perhaps the most obvious ways to calculate operating cash flow is sales minus cost minus taxes. This is the top-down approach, starting with sales, which is 1,500 minus cost 700 minus 68 of, hopefully we know this, this is taxes. And what did we, what did we actually, what did we actually do? Basically, we did not deduct any non-cash expenses. So basically in this formula, we ignored depreciation why did we ignore depreciation because we're looking at operating cash flow CF cash flow only deals with cash depreciation is a non-cash account so another way to find 732 is take your sales which is also we're assuming all sales is cash all cost is cash here and we paid $68 obviously in taxes and that's going to be in cash and this is called the top-down approach because you're starting with the top which is sales and subtracting. Another way to look at operating cash flow is to use the tax shield approach. Tax shield approach. Let's take a look at the tax shield approach. Now, what is the tax shield approach? The tax shield is any item that's going to shield. Shield means what? It's going to protect. It's going to shield your income Shield your income from what? From taxes. And what could shield your income from taxes? You guessed it. Depreciation. Remember, depreciation reduces, de what, what depreciation does, it reduces your, well, I'm not going to use taxable income. I'm going to use, it reduces your earnings before interest and taxes. And as a result, as it reduces your earning before interest and taxes, your taxes are lower. Although depreciation is a non-cash. So what we say depreciation shields us, protects us, gives us a tax saving, shield us from paying more taxes. Okay. Now, how do we calculate that tax shield? How do we calculate this tax shield? Very easy. If you want to find out how much, how much depreciation is saving you, take the depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. That's it. It's very simple. Simply put, if your tax rate... Let's, let me give you an example. If your tax rate equal to 25%, if your tax rate equal to 25%, and you have $1,000 in depreciation, what's going to depreciation do? Depreciation would lower your EBIT, your earning before interest and taxes, by $1,000. And as a result, if you lower your EBIT by $1,000, it means you lowered your EBIT by 1000 you lowered your taxes by 1000 times 0.25, so you saved... That's your tax saving. 
So the depreciation shielded you, protected you from paying $250 in taxes because it reduced your EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. And believe it or not, the same concept apply in taxation too, because depreciation is a good thing. In taxes, depreciation is a great thing because it, it protects you from paying taxes. So another way to look at operating cash flow is to take your sales minus cost, Multiply this by one minus the tax rate. Remember here you are. Let me put this in a different color because I don't want to confuse the two. So taking the same information that we are working with all this session, if we take sales minus cost, multiply by notice times one minus the tax rate, which is one minus the tax rate multiplied by 0.66. So this is basically your your sales minus your taxes multiplying by 0.66 because what's going to happen so your sales minus your taxes what's going to keep you keep you at 800 remember of this amount you're only keeping 66 percent out of it you're only keeping 66 percent why you're only keeping 66 percent because you have to pay taxes of you have to pay taxes of 34 percent so this is what you do is this is how you deal with sales minus cost then to find out how much Taxes, how much depreciation is given you in tax saving. Notice you add tax saving, you add tax saving. How do you calculate your tax saving? You have depreciation of 600. You multiply it by the tax rate. You multiply it by the tax rate. And this gives you your savings. Your savings from depreciation is $204. Now, the higher your, ta your, higher your tax rate, the higher is your depreciation. Your depreciation tax shield. So if you have $600 and your tax rate is 40%, that's going to save you $240. Your tax shield is 600 and this is your tax savings. Tax savings, $240. Again, we're always going back to the $732. $732. This approach is views OCF as a two component. The first one is what the project Project cash flow would be if there was no depreciation expense, okay, which will be 528. So this first component here is 528, 528. Then what you do, you'll, you add your second component, and your second component is called your depreciation tax shield, basically calculated by taking your depreciation times your tax rate. We know that depreciation, obviously, for the fifth time is a non-cash expense. The only cash flow effect of deducting depreciation is to reduce your taxes, which is a benefit to you. At a current rate of 34%, um, you can save $204. And remember, the higher your tax rate, the higher is your tax savings, the more benefit you have in your uh, uh, depreciation, uh, depreciation tax shield. Okay. So again, we looked at the three methods. We looked at the three methods. And the three methods gave us this gave us the same answer. So you might be asking, so why why do we have to learn about all three methods? Well, it all depends on how the information is given to you. So you will see in the next session, which is the last session, make sure you read the book. Um, it will it, it will you will apply those different situation, different calculation in different scenarios. So that's why you will need to learn how you could manipulate all the numbers. For example, immediately, once you are given depreciation, hopefully you know now, if I take my depreciation multiplied by my tax rate, I'm gonna give, it's gonna give me my tax shield or my tax saving, okay? So which is good, this is gonna be a plus, a positive cash flow, positive cash flow. Or if I'm giving net income and I'm given depreciation, all what I have to do is take net income plus depreciation and that's gonna give me my OCF, assuming I have no interest expense. So those are the things that you could be able to use to manipulate your, uh, to, not to manipulate, to quickly find out what's your operating cash flow under different circumstances. Make sure to read your textbook. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me.